just a show of hands, how many of you are SREs? Oh, wonderful. Developers who built stuff in Rust. That's a curveball, and wow, you caught that one good. Um, data pipelines, anyone built one, seen one recently? Anyone heard of data at all? Of course, thank you. Um, so that's how we'll start. We'll talk about observa observations, observabilities of data pipelines. Um, yeah, my name is Hong. Uh, I'm a sales engineer from uh, data. This is how we can keep in touch on social media and emails. Um, so we'll start with a best practice. Um, how do we monitor data systems today? One of the key things to note is that you'll be looking out for some of the SRE golden signals, if you like, to start off with latency of your system. How much lag is your system encountering as a result of a voluminous amount of uh, requests sent to the system itself? Errors, what's the error rate like? It's good, it's healthy, tolerable, within a range that you could manage. Traffic requests, so basically saturation. How saturated is your system utilization-wise? Uh, basically all indicating the health of your application. So one of the key things about data of the systems that you observe is that it's huge. That's why we call it big data. You want to get more of your observed data, and that's where the concept of a pipeline might actually help. Now, the evolution of the pipeline has uh, got to a stage where now you get full empowerment across the departments in a organization. Uh, multiple personas can actually be affecting changes to the data pipeline. That's right, your sets of observability data could have different Yes, different data players, different personas, interact with it, perhaps transform it, enrich it. Nothing new, because you may have heard of Kafka, you have, you have heard of uh, Databricks, you have heard of um, quite a lot of uh, data lakes, for instance. And we talk about this. Um, but it takes, some, it takes something to basically put together a observability platform that is capable of observing those key uh, signals that we talked about a slide earlier, at the same time allowing empowerment of uh, different departments that will interact with their data sets. All in all, the whole idea is to improve quality control um, on the data. And you can see the example shown here, Kubernetes clusters being observed, streamed across different departments or having different dif personas in the departments um, have a say in terms of how we want the data to be manipulated, used. We'll see a demo of that shortly. And um, here's an example of why that sort of philosophy actually helps in observability today for the benefit of SRE projects. It's called democratization, democratizing the data platform itself, where you will have a, a means of, say, the security team interacting with other SREs of other backend teams, such as this uh, example portrays, and making changes, manipulating the changes. It could be just simply tagging certain data sets and saying that this is a result of having a very unsecured, vulnerable app. That's what the security team does. And then there is the go uh, governance, risk, and compliance team that could categorize this put that into the data warehouse, make it easy to, for uh, other teams to reference, to, to visualize it in their own dashboards. So introducing a open source technology courtesy of Datadog. It's called Vector. And uh, we provide the source code, the, rather the link to the source code in, on GitHub in a short while. Uh, the whole idea here is regardless of the sources and the sinks, uh, your endpoints, a uh, vector is a easily uh, uh, a configurable, installable, deployable uh, pipeline, and very importantly, also highly scalable. A huge amount of loads, um, the likes that um, Comcast, T-Mobile, and Zendesk have actually experienced, um, the vector was able to deliver. So vector uh, is that uh, data pipeline that um, a lot of uh, personas might 
be looking forward to interact upon. One key thing about this is because it's from Datadog, we left our own dog food. So Datadog being a leader in observability, um, the go-to uh, observability platform for the, for the SRE today, we like our log management. We like it a lot. So does uh, our customers, the community, uh, the SRE community. So it's highly uh, encouraged to use their log, log management hand in hand together with a open source observability a pipeline built on Vector. So Vector comes with the concept of transformation and enrichment of the data sets. Very importantly, also it comes with a concept of an aggregator. We'll see in the next few slides example of how the aggregator works. The aggregator um, basically allows multiple clients, agents, some of which from Datadog, some of which are from other um, um, observability tools. Um, they could be streaming all that rich observability data into the transformation pipelines, so as to speak, at stage two. And then keeping a record in different kinds of things it could be Splunk, it could be a data lake, uh, it could be any sort of uh, um, um, a data schema that Vector understands. So there's a long list of sources and a long list of things uh, that the Vector aggregator is able to connect. Here's an example of more possibilities, the topologies. So it could be literally storing it into AWS S3, storage. Um, I mentioned um, some of our, the, the community favorites, Kafka, Loki, Elasticsearch, all of which could be potential things after transformation of the data um, that originated from the usual push sources like uh, Logstash, Prometheus, StatsD, Syslog, has been converted, enriched, transformed. Um, it could be even uh, condensed. Uh, prior to storage in all these things over here on the right. All in all, highly load balanced, highly available, scalable as well. Um, the concept here is that pipelines for everybody for every kind of use case. Let's take a look at the demo. So over here are examples of some of the pipelines that have been built. Um, Whenever we visualize a pipeline, the different stages of the data transformation of the data enrichment is really important to the SRE. It's really important to the different personas. Remember the security team, the GRC team. So it makes sense to perhaps look at error rates. Like are we getting all, because this is huge amounts of data being streamed. At every single stage, are we having a transformation issue? Uh, so, some of the data not uh, being enriched appropriately. And then we can also see not just arrows, we can also see the throughput. I'm just going to rewind that again. Um, there we go. Uh, so you can see throughput, you could see the number of events uh, that could potentially also indicate health of the different uh, stages or transformation. Uh, we could look at the, the utilization of that particular stage of the pipeline also. And very importantly, also diagnostics. At real time, whenever there is an issue with transformation of data sets, uh, those diagnostic logs are pretty help, uh, helpful. Very importantly, also get a, get, get a feel. Get a feel using a few gauge, like how, how much uh, in terms of the, the event flow uh, is actually occurring over here. And very importantly, also uh, would be as you can see over there, way at the top, a capability of transforming the data based on uh, the different sources. I can see at the get go, uh, some of the sources are pertaining to one of our favorite agents, the data log agent log, and we're transforming it based on individual key value pairs. Uh, so, log transformation, that's right, another use case. Very importantly, also, eventually, it leads down to simple management. And you can see that from a perspective of locks, like I mentioned, we really like their dark lock management, just like the rest of customers. We could use that to pass through any amount of um, enriched and transformed uh, vector observability pipeline locks. Take that, analyze it, and eventually even go into metadata, know where it actually comes from, 
which particular components were involved. Um, very importantly, also, which level of detail do you actually want? One key thing would be context. From a contextual standpoint, you could even locate exactly where um, in a log stream, um, a particular identified log entry that has been um, picked up from an observability pipeline. If you can dive in deeper using the data log management. So with that, we're back to presentation slides. Now, Vector doesn't live alone. It is part of an observability platform that is the leader in the industry. It's uh, a platform that uh, provides you with insights into usability, observability uh, uh, driven by AI as well. Very importantly, there's the freshness, the accuracy, the durability, and the coverage that this platform delivers that makes it a whole lot easier for SREs to do their work. Very importantly, uh, because it's a uh, unified platform, economies of scale, 16 technology pillars all on one single platform, ranging from uh, mobile user uh, analytics to browser-based analytics, uh, browser-based apps analytics to security analysis, um, posture management, security posture management, very modernly log management as well, and also application tracing, all in all, smart tooling all in one platform. Here's an example of what you could potentially do with 16 pillars all in one. With the power of Vector, um, helping in terms of uh, observing huge uh, data sets, and that is root cause analysis uh, within the power of your fingertips, your mouse clicks. We could dive in really, really quickly using Datadog um, with Vector uh, to analyze data with regards to each of your deployed applications. This is deployment tracking, where we could actually dive into the various uh, signals again, error rates, latency, saturations, picking up on in terms of um, issues every time any of those signals like latencies get too high. Here's an example again, or I could be doing with huge amounts of data, could be streamed over observability pipelines, and that would be um, some of that data correlate to application traces. So you have that data in log format correlated with application traces and visualized across the span of your modern application, which could be a mirrored network of uh, microservices. All in all, all integrated, making a whole lot of sense to use a platform to investigate if there were any outages that in the moment you see within the application frame graph that is indeed a module, a method call that has failed. And then dive in those logs that the factor has streamed to say data log. And um, using data log to analyze a, um, a whole lot more of um, what this modern application is actually um, uh, facing. So data log it is the unified observability platform. Did you know it's also a very, very big data pipeline? So going back to the theme of this presentation again, let's take a look at what's underneath covers. From the agent to the ingestion buffer to the individual aspects of the processing capabilities of data, it's a pipeline. It's a huge pipeline with time series database storing all the metrics, traces, and logs, what we call the three pillars of observability. From that standpoint, it's easy to build a dashboard on top of that time series database. We support 22,000 customers using millions of hosts. Collecting 10 second snapshots, yes, sampling is supported. So 10 seconds seems to be a popular um, um, sample time window of trillions of events per day. And very importantly, this is what the pipeline will look like potentially for a cloud administrator, uh, for SREs who uses um, the three pillars approach, metrics, traces, and logs to analyze outages um, of their application or system issues or performance optimize them. Um, very importantly, the, the CISO's department, the CISO minus one, will have a role to play using such a um, platform technology. And that will be being able to um, analyze the security posture of the cloud native environment, um, monitor the, uh, the health from a security standpoint of their workloads and their applications, and visualize it in such a manner where you have what we call a 
huge map of all your assets, your microservices, assets, databases, and we could potentially be pivoting from one particular service to another really, really quickly, thanks to a concept known as Unified Observability Platform. Now, from the perspective of AI-driven nature, that big data pipeline called Datadog actually helps also to analyze critical failures, perform the root cause analysis across such huge amounts of data and also the, the frequency of data changes. Very importantly, this is DevOps centric. The concept where we can actually be profiling the health of your application, dive into perhaps the CPU time per minute at each level. So imagine if you have been doing DevOps um, DevOps talk about continuous innovation and integration, rolling out incremental changes to the code. The challenges is every time you have those new features rolled out, can you accurately determine how well the particular module is performing? So again, a concept of having a really big data pipeline that data dot is um, built on top of, well, it's possible. It's possible. So in short, download vector today. Right, kick the tires, try out different deployment topologies. This is what you get when you visit the GitHub repository, uh, officially where the, the, the vector agents, the source code is made available. There are components listed, there are guides listed as well, how you would be deploying it for use case A, use case B, use case C, and so on and so forth. Uh, some advanced use cases worth mentioning very quickly before we end. Um, Kinesis Firehose or log forwarding. So you, you have ingesting of cloud logs into a Kinesis Firehose. Can you make sense of those logs really quickly? Vector can help. Could you merge uh, multi-line logs or Lua, one of the f uh, favorite programming languages when it comes to web infrastructure? Nginx is built on Lua. So could you do that? So the answer is yes. So this uh, is really where you would uh, want to uh, start getting more acquainted with Vector, it's repository, and here we go. GitHub.com slash Vector dot dev slash Vector, um, as well as there's a blog, and a quick start, um, up documentation as well, all here on the slide. And if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me right now, or you can drop me a mail. Right, thanks for that. Um, didn't really mention that, but great point. Um, Vector came from uh, originally a company called Timber.io. So Timber has now part of Datadog. Um, in the spirit of this, uh, 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 I, I guess, the, the conference, uh, we will show you that Datadog continues to support the open source community. Datadog, did you know, was an open source technology company at the very, very beginning. Yeah, so Datadog was open source. So we have many, multiple open source projects. Vector continues to be one. Well, I, I guess I, I, I can't quote in terms of the, you know, of the, the business direction of the whole company, but uh, we continue to serve our customers. It's, it's something you do very well, and I think our customers appreciate it. And Vector plays a huge, huge part in our, our observability uh, platform strategy.